Two workmen make a horrific discovery when they stumble upon the body of a young girl who's been decapitated. Who is she and how did she get there? My name's Emma and I'd like to tell you the story of the St. Louis Jane Doe. It's 1983 in St. Louis, Missouri and two men are looking for scrap metal in the basement of an abandoned building. One of them flicks a lighter for a cigarette and through the glimmers sees a body. They immediately notify police and the police turn up and initially they think that this is either a sex worker or a drug addict. However, the body is face down and when they turn her over, they quickly realize that this is a prepubescent girl. She is near naked apart from a yellow sweater. Her hands are tied behind her back with red and white rope. She has been SA'd and decapitated. So the investigation starts and they believe she is between the ages of 8 or 11 years old. She is African American. She's not homeless. She's well kept. She's got no previous signs of abuse. She's not malnutritioned or anything. So this had been a girl from a family uh, and she'd been relatively well looked after. Her fingernails had been painted red and as I say no previous sign of abuse. She's not underweight, anything like that. They check school records but can't find anyone that's missing or any missing person so they believe she's from out of state. Her head is never found, it's still not found to this day and because of that they obviously can't do dental records, they can't um, do facial identification, they do take her fingerprints, her footprints and her DNA and through forensics they decipher that she wasn't killed at that location, she was actually killed five days prior and her body dumped there. The police actually end up contacting several psychics and one says that the police will find her head on a boat off the Gulf of Mexico. Another say that she is a missing girl, Shannon Johnson, and that her killer was a drifter from South Texas. Both of these are completely debunked, they're not true. Another psychic asks to be sent the jumper so that she can try and make a connection. This jumper ends up getting lost in the mail, so that evidence is gone. After 10 months of investigating and no leads, her body is buried in a cemetery. In 2013, with obviously scientific improvements and things, they exhume her body to test her bones to find out whereabouts she lived. They decipher that she either lived in the southeast or the midwest of America. They think her killer must have been a family member because there is no missing reports of a girl of that description. Someone must have known. How can a girl just go missing and murdered with no trace? So they, that's why they believe it must be some family member and it's they're covering it up. They are still appealing for people. If you have any information, if you knew a girl around that time that you just sort of went missing and the family made maybe an excuse for her, please get in contact. Some believe it was the serial killer Vernon Brown. At the time, he did kill three women and girls. He did confess to those three that he was convicted for. After intense questioning, he never admitted to this case. He was executed in 2005 for his crimes. That's the mysterious case of the St. Louis Jane Doe. I don't understand how a girl can be murdered and there's no missing reports. There's nothing to identify her at all. So this is still an unsolved case. It's really, really sad that this eight to 11 year old girl has just been brutally murdered and we have no idea who she is. As always, if you like my content and you'd like to hear more true crime stories, please remember to like, subscribe and comment.